Okay, we'll move on to public. Like, you're muted. You know, it's like what we've all been hearing for years, right? <laughs> Do we have any public comment from the audience? Okay, how about anybody online? I don't see anybody. Is there any? Yeah, there's two attendees. Yeah. So you ask them if they want to raise their hand. Well, they would raise their hand before. Yeah, uh, anybody online want to uh, make a comment? If you so, raise your hand. Okay. So we will move on to the treasurer's report. All righty. So we will go over the um, executive summary first. Page one. So um, fiscal year to date, our first month in our new year, the town has received revenues of 22,617,447 in the first month of our new fiscal year, or 46.8% of our total amount of 48,377,698. When comparing our performance to last fiscal year, we are running a little behind of where we were at the end of July last fiscal year, or 2.9% less mm -hmm. from last July. And next, we'll move down to the authorized investment section of the first sheet. As of the end of July, the town had $26.5 million in its bank accounts. The investment committee met again with our advisor, Morgan Stanley, as one of our short-term bonds came due on July 31. We decided to reinvest it, the town cash, into another short-term three-month treasury bond with an annualized yield of 3.17%, which will mature in May 31. May 31st, sorry, not May of 2031. <laughs> that came out really wrong. Um, so it's a three month and it will mature on May 31st of 2023. Uh, we will continue the investment committee to meet and analyze our portfolio as our bonds mature, which will continue each month now. So we've seen a lot of movement, as you can see in the stiff rate, the average last month was 1.64. Today it is currently 2.21. The investment committee is always reviewing our bank rates as well as cash needs to determine if we can switch some funds to the stiff rate, stiff account. And if we do, we can get these funds out with a day's notice. And as we always say, Webster Bank will pay us the stiff rate in arrears. So we'll see movement in that each month. Then we'll move down to the pension plan. So as the end of July, we also received our report from Morgan Stanley, the town's investment manager, about the performance of the two pension plans, the town and the fire department. And there's been a small upward movement from the past few months. So it's a little more positive. Town pension plan is down minus 9.54% fiscal year to date versus its benchmark of a minus 7.57%. Over the three-year horizon, the town plan has returned 6.06 .06 versus its benchmark of 5.88. The fire department is down minus 8.70 fiscal year to date and has returned 5.97% over the three-year horizon versus its benchmark of 6.74. How come it says yeah. Yeah. the numbers that we have are different than the way different? The number fiscal year to date net of fees up 5.3. Um, hmm. What do you, what yeah, do you I have mine from um, my Morgan Stanley report here. So, all right, so we'll have to we'll check, that. check that. We'll check that. Okay. I mean, 
since June 30th, there's been a huge, you know, well, it has kind of moved. It has, we have gotten better. A lot better. A lot better <laughs> in our worstness. It's gotten uh, better. Um, so it's, if you, those bench, yeah. what, what are these? Those no numbers don't always jive with my numbers that I give you sometimes on that report. Is there a delay? Um, no. No? No. So I'm, why don't we, um, why don't we be in touch with Morgan Stanley tomorrow? Okay. And see if you can get something for call Kevin. August 16th. Okay. Close of business. Okay. And that'll give them something way up to date. You got um, it. Will call, I will call Kevin tomorrow. Yeah. See what the difference between the July 31 number is yep. and what we have here. And I can give you what well, Matt has it probably right in front of him. Yep. And I have then, it right here. And then we can also. I have the same thing. Yep. Right through August yep. 16. Yeah, she has a copy. Of Wait, so. No, I have it all from. Yeah, I have it all. So. Yeah. I have my own, and then I have that. And I have it all. Yep. Um, can I? I want to make a comment. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, you know, up top when we talk about taxes, um, the numbers. I talked to Leanne, and she said, obviously, taxes were August second. I think it was on Monday. When you include August second. Mm -hmm. The numbers came right into balance uh, from where they were last year. In fact, it was a little bit ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. So just so you know, okay. because I looked at that number and I was like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, she, that's, you know, significant difference. And she said, comparing August 2nd this year to August 2nd last year, it was um, very comparable. It's just the fact that it's August and not right, July but 31, I mean, or? but July thirty one and July thirty one is apples to apples. Now, okay. I, you know, I think when we include that extra day, there's always that extra day, right? And do apples to apples, the numbers <laughs> reflect <laughs> something very similar. Should equal out next month, you think? So next month, I think yeah. that's what you'll say. Okay, but will it equal out because there's an extra week or because of the? No, it'll no, blow up because the collection was similar. Okay. Right. So, Carl, instead of saying executive summary as of July 31st, maybe we should label it as end of tax season. No, they, I think they do their books at the end of the month. Yeah, it's, it, it'll be fine. I think, I know what you're saying, but we do a monthly report. And yes. I know. But if you want to include up to August, then in fact, the label is wrong. <clears throat> Well, this is apples to apples. So this is through July 31, comparing this year to last year. Right. So it is apples to apples. However, what you know, we may have lagged in collection this year uh, in July, and maybe they got a bank payment. You know, uh, maybe one of the banks paid two million dollars, and it was just registered. And last year it wasn't. Uh, so on that August date. So that's a possibility of what happened. I asked Leanne, she looked at the numbers, she's not worried. They're what right was the last time. day you could pay taxes? One or two? I think it was, first was Sunday, I want to say. And August was first was Monday. First was Monday, so yeah. it was August first. Okay. What could have happened, Tom, is, you know, I just recall from my many years previously in the municipality is many people wait to the last day. Well, oh, sure. And, yeah. So, but everything still should show be up in August. August. I, know. So, I mean, that, that's a, a rel that's a rel well, so, so tax season to tax season, or July I think 31st I, I still July think 31st. that July thirty one, and maybe what we would do next year is give you an update through July, uh, through July fifteenth, uh, August fifteenth. No, the, the, no, the, no, 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 the, no, the no. Yeah, August fifteenth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because the last day to pay would be August first. So maybe a, an up to date, not a month, you know, a month so far for August would probably give us a better year year to year comparison. Apples to apples. So well, as long as we have consistency, it makes us it is feel consistent. Better. Yeah, and they are trying to close their books. I mean, well, closing the books was June thirtieth, but you're talking about month. So we'll get you updated numbers this week before the next meeting so that you see these numbers well, whatever it's just that i just felt there was a discrepancy in the title and uh, that's my point yep understood okay. understood all right bruce 
Um, just a question, not sure whether you can answer this, maybe uh, yeah. Carl can, but have we gotten the second tranche of the ARPA money? Yes. Yet? Well, oh, good well, question. I don't know. So, yes and no. <laughs> uh, we've gotten two. Last year it came, $1.4 million came. So far, we've gotten two, I believe, $500,000 payments, mm. which is odd. That is odd. Because that's not what they promised. Yeah. So, where does um, it come from? Carl, the federal government? Comes through the state of Connecticut. The state does. But it comes from the Fed. Right. But yeah. through the state. Yeah. And how much more are we supposed to get? Another 1.4. Yeah. So, I think we've received. Um, about a million dollars of the 1.4 that okay. we're scheduled to receive. And so I was only asking the question relative to we put uh, you know a certain amount into a higher yielding account. I'm just curious as to will we try to put the next one point in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think the I want to say the estimated I thought I saw it somewhere the estimated uh, amount of return so far on the ARPA funds is 16 grand, Perfect. which is you know, nice. pretty, free money. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Yes. Again. Arbitraging grant money. Why you not? Know, it's pretty good. <laughs> I love it. If we can do it, why not? All right. You got Ray thinking already, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. No, no, we're getting into Ray. Hey, welcome, oh, Ray. That's how it's hard. All right. So we've had some good discussion on that. Yeah, you know, it's awesome. Well, I will get back to you guys on the pension money from Kevin. Thank you. Um, but that's a good question, Carl. All right, so then overall, all our monies at the moment, we have a total cash balance of 26.5 million. We have total pension balance of 26.9 million for total assets under management of 53.4 million. So then when we go to the treasurer's report broken out in more detail, the tax revenues were 22.5 million for the month of July uh, at the moment, bringing the fiscal year to date total to 48.1% as of July 30, 31. It is what it is. In terms of local revenues, the town collected 85,000 with mini golf and Harvey's Beach being their only primary drivers of local revenue for July. And so overall for the month of July, the town collected 22,617,447 in local revenues, bringing the revenue collection to 46.8% for the 2022-2023 budget. Okay, I'm sure we'll see a significant difference in August. Any other questions? No questions, we'll move on. Okay. Thank you. Leanne so will be here, but um, she has another obligation at the moment. And I told her, you know, seven o'clock should be fine. Um, she'll be here by seven, but she, you know, I'm not positive. Um, but I would ask that we skip that for now. Okay. Or, yeah, just a lot of order. Okay, uh, discussion and possible action of transfer of debt service to pension reserve fund. Yeah, so um, we've talked about this, something I brought before the Board of Finance several months ago. Um, you have the memo in front of you, and uh, I mean, I, I think it's since the pension board required uh, asked for a pension reserve fund, this seems to be an expedient way to fulfill that request. Although not mandatory that we fulfill it this year, we can chip away at it. It's not like, oh my God, it has to happen. But um, I think it's um, an opportune time to make this transfer given what the town uh, debt service looks like over the course of the next Three years, five years, seven years. Um, so you have the memo in front of you, and uh, I speak for action on it. Is the 321 the full amount that's in the yes, service reserve? It is. <clears throat> and a, just a, a point of um, a, a recommendation. 
I think what we ought to do is revise the um, agenda just so a bondholder doesn't uh, go nuts about oh. the fact that we're transferring debt service. We should do debt service reserve fund to the pension reserve fund. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, good catch. Other, other than that, I'm, I'm in favor of doing this. Transfer of tax. Okay, I'd like to make a motion. I'll second it. Okay. To approve the transfer of $321,821 from the Debt Service Reserve Fund to the newly created Pension Reserve Fund and further to move the transfer to town meeting. I think I heard Brad second. Brad second? Yes. <clears throat> okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And we will move on to discussion and possible action for the fiscal year 22 year end surplus transfers. So there are a, does everybody have the board of, I want to make sure everybody has the board of ed memo uh, with regard to their surplus. Um, is that in the package or not? Or was that? <clears throat> you have a copy of that memo? Because it is referenced. Did I get that? Uh, me, I don't know if you did. <clears throat> it is no. referenced in here. So let's let's go through this. So okay. there is at this moment, uh, let's break it out. Uh, a board of ed surplus of two hundred forty-five thousand five hundred sixty dollars. Uh, which the superintendent is asking for that money. And I'm not going to, I'm not, let me finish before we jump into this, asking to be transferred back to uh, Board of Ed Reserve Fund to put towards air conditioning in the schools. Uh, is that correct? Yes. Essentially. Yes. Uh, so that is the 245,000 of the 1.661,649. Um, on the town side, we, I want to say we underexpended the budget by about a quarter of a million dollars. Uh, so we have underexpended the budget in the past by a little bit more than that. Uh, I will tell you that Leanne, over the course of the last month or two, was watching very closely because she said, we're come, we're going to come in close. Um, and... So we ended up coming in about at about that number under expenses. The remainder of the surplus is revenue. Okay, town clerk, building official, mini golf, um, uh, and um, state state funds that we received. Um, so that's how the surplus. So you got about five hundred thousand between the board of ed and the town under expended about 1.1 in a revenue surplus approximately. Uh, as you can see, uh, if we wanna keep our reserves, our rainy day fund at 17%, where we've been for a few years now, it's, it requires $185,000 to be transferred to the rainy day account, which of course, um, I think the Board of Finance absolutely recommends, I hope. Um, uh, and then I paired, I came in here a few weeks ago and made some a couple of requests. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to run through them relatively quickly right now. Uh, I asked Larry how much it would cost to repair some. In fact, I got a, an email today from a resident. So where the St. John crosswalk is, uh, that parking area on across from St. John, not on St. John's side of the street, that uh, parking area needs to be repaved. There's a, a divot in there. Uh, I think there's one in front of Essence. I know there's one in front of- um, Essex Golf. Essex Golf, right. <coughs> Mary came back to me and said, if we really wanna do all of them, it's like, it was like over $200,000. But I think this amount of money will get 
some of the really bad ones done, uh, and it will help us improve um, some of the main street parking areas that are, I think, kind of bad. It's um, a little bit embarrassing. I think our main street has come a long way. All our stores are full, and I'd like to put some money aside in addition to uh, Larry's paving budget, which he usually has allocated um, uh, to um, attack this issue. Um, item number three, I'm looking at page two, um, and on item number three. Uh, you know, it's great that we've received all this grant money. Um, so I'm going to share, as you know, we've received $500,000 in, I think it was March, to do some work at Main Street Connections Park. A lot of that is going to be site work, but we received $500,000. We received 770,000 to do sidewalks on Route 1. Uh, the governor was down here just about a week and a half ago, Norm Needleman, Devin Carney, and uh, the governor spent like an hour and a half here. He was wonderful. Um, came into town hall, was trying to kibitz with some of the employees. It was, he, he spent time, which is really nice. Uh, went over to the Cape Museum. His aide said to me earlier on, uh, why don't we meet uh, at the um, the Hepper, the Audrey Hepper? I said, don't, <laughs> don't do that. I told Brett that. Brett's like, oh, Jesus, you know? <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. I'm sure the governor would not have made that mistake. His aid is much younger. <laughs> um, so, oh, boy. Um, anyway, uh, it grants, and this is a question that has been asked by the Board of Finance, for years, when you ask for a grant, what are the additional costs? And um, there are additional costs and they're relatively, well, they can be relatively expensive. Most of it related to engineering. Drawing up plans, even sidewalks require plans. They require construction administration. They require materials testing. Um, so, in this request, I asked for 250,000 for new for sidewalks, whatever. So with the bond that we received, the 770,000 from the bond grant, and we put in for the steep grant last week to get this, it's a $1.4 million project to go from Dairy Queen to the Westbrook Town Line. The town is gonna have to put in about 200,000, 200, 250. Because we want the, to get that 770, Norm said, hey, you're going to have to have some skin in the game on this. So I said, absolutely. And um, so I say, Norm, I call him Senator to his face. I want you to know that. And it drives him crazy, but I call him only Senator. So I, Senator Needleman, I said that we will definitely do that. I don't mean to be um, colloquial with uh, the Senator. So. So we're talking um, about three and four right now, or just three or four? Three what? What three or four? Number three or uh, four. Kind of both, okay? Okay. So uh, the 100,000 is to for grant-related costs, and it's probably going to be largely engineering, but it could be some other stuff along the way. I know we're going to incur it. It would be in an off-budget account. It may not be all in fiscal 23. It may bleed over into fiscal 24. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a lot of money we're getting. Uh, and if we get the steep grant, we're talking about $1.8 million in grants. And it's, it's going to require engineering. And engineering is typically 10 to 15%. <laughs> so um, that's why uh, I thought I would ask for these funds uh, to go into grant-related projects. Carl? Yes, please. I, um... At one point um, before, when you were describing this, I thought what I heard was one of the reasons why we have been as successful as we have been is we've been ahead of the curve. That there has been engineering co uh, costs or engineering activities committed, we knew, and so when the phone rang, you were able to say, "Yeah, let's do that." Yes. So is this a hundred thousand effectively? It, the way it reads, it almost sounds like it's post 
you know, kind of grant versus pre grant. It, and I'm just wanting to yeah. make sure. It's a lot of it is going to be related to grants we've re we have received and, and if we receive the seed grant. Um, I want to be cautious about engaging in too much engineering. So Bruce, uh, for instance, one of the projects we'd like to do, have, and you're right about that. So we did, I mean, two things. Um, to get the $770,000 grant, Jeff Jacobson did a design of the sidewalk all the way to the Westbrook town line, went to Inland Wetlands, got Inland Wetlands approval. So we were ready mm -hmm. and we submitted six pages of plans, preliminary, it needs a little bit more flushing out, but we were ready to get that grant. Another project that we want to get shovel ready is to go from the Henny Penny to Staples to connect that sidewalk. Um, we contacted Jeff on that and say, hey, just so we have a project ready when the money becomes available, he said, I did the exact same thing in Woodbury. And he sent us pictures uh, how they drive some wood pilings and the sidewalk is outside the road. And so that, as long as it wouldn't be terribly expensive because the site, the sidewalks to Westbrook are just going to be, I'm going to need money to do that. I know I'm going to need money. With our other engineering money, the $80,000 that we have in the budget, I would hope that we would be able to do some other projects, um, maybe to get some shovel ready projects like that particular project. But yes, we've done that within the town budget with regard to the engineering budget that exists. I'm not, I wouldn't preclude using $5,000, let's say, of this money towards Jeff doing a preliminary design uh, to get a shovel ready project. Because it's a lot less to do preliminary design than, than, okay, you've submitted it, you get the grant, now you really got to invest your funds in it. So, uh, so the answer to your question is yes, it would be both post project and potentially when we see a new project that we'd like to get identified for future funds. So both. Yeah. But I know I'm going to need, or the town is going to need money to administer these projects. And so that's the request there. The 250,000 that follows is uh, just to partly to our portion of match on the 770 and potentially on the steep grant. In addition, Leanne, we have about a hundred and change currently in the sidewalk project. Yes. So that would bring that up to about 350, but we've committed about 250 in match to complete the sidewalk from Dairy Queen to Westbrook. Uh, just so you know, when we submitted the steep grant, we received 27 letters of support from folks on the Westbrook side, mostly uh, the Vista group, Vista, in, um, Vista Opportunities, I think they're called. Um, very much in support. As that end of town develops, and I know the rumor mill is out there in terms of what's gonna go in, I'm not gonna say it, but you know, it looks, number one, you have job opportunities. These, the folks at Vista are all employable. Typically they don't drive though. They ride their bikes and they walk. That end of town between what is being proposed north of the big Y, in, in the Benny's Plaza, uh, there's going to be a lot of people using those sidewalks, both from the Westbrook side and from the old Seabrook side. So um, number four is to request additional funding into the sidewalk account. Um, number five, I think it's Kathy. Kathy, there she is. So Kathy Connolly is here to discuss number five, the invasive species. Um, I'm going to skip over that for a minute and we'll come back to you, Kathy. I didn't see you there. Welcome. Um, and then number six is uh, park and rec capital projects. Um, so not entirely raise wish list, but knocking off a few projects uh, totaling $140,000. Uh, you see them six projects, A through F. I think that has been previously explained here, so I won't go into it right now. Uh, you can ask Ray if you need more detail. Um, the request came up from Larry to uh, try to fund a new sweeper. Uh, the sweeper we have 
I know was acquired, I think, even before I was on the board of finance, um, the back all. This would be a sweeper and a catch basin, um, catch basin cleaner. Um, that equipment, I have a quote, this is through Sourcewell. So it is a company that we use that um, does bidding all across the country. Uh, and the quote is for, and it's significant, $357,000. Uh, <clears> if we put $200,000 towards it, what we would do is use Larry's sinking fund, $80,000 a year, um, to basically we would buy the sweeper with the $200,000, whatever the balance is, that account Larry's capital sinking fund would go negative to be paid off probably within four years uh, because he has one more year left on his some of his other payments. May 2024 for the other equipment. And May of 2024. And then we'd be able to start establishing paying off two years to get this piece of equipment. Um, Board of Ed, 245, 60, and then the balance of the surplus, which is still 366,000, I'm recommending it not drop to the bottom line because we've already done that with the 17%, 185,000. The balance I'm recommending goes into the capital matter current account. We're gonna use it. We have projects all year long. We know we have this camera software security, which get, we're getting a few quotes, Rick, on that. Um, and that we estimate that's going to be a six figure job all day long. It just is. Um, this, how many cameras do you have at the school? It's like uh, several hundred. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was more than even more than that. Maybe a few more. Um, the town doesn't have near, we have like 15 or something, but we're, we are talking about adding more and using them similarly to the way the Board of Ed or the way the dispatch uses Board of Ed cameras if there's an incident they can have situational awareness, not monitoring what's going on at the town beach. Not at all. That's not the purpose of it. So um, the 366, 824, I'm not saying that's where it's going. I'm just saying into the capital non recovery fund, we have projects all year long that need to be done. Beefs up that account a little bit. We don't need any more money dropping to the bottom line. Um, so that's the memo. The motions follow. Um, Kathy Conlon, why don't we hear from Kathy? I okay. almost forgot about you. All right. So I Kathy's going to step finish. up to talk about um, some of the invasive. So I, I think most of you know Kathy. Um, Kathy, we're lucky to have Kathy in town. Kathy is a, um, she's just, she cares so much about so many pieces of property in town from Founders Park to the preserve. And she didn't ask me, she didn't say, Carl, we need money for invasive species. She didn't say that. But I thought I would, actually I talked to her husband like three months ago, I said, I'm thinking of doing this. Don't tell Kathy yet, though. It's true. <laughs> and and uh, but more recently, I called Kathy and said, "What if we did this? How would this help?" Yeah. Well, um, it's a topic that may be very new to some of you. Uh, let me just get the presentation queued up. I, um, Larry Hayden, gave me the password so that people yeah. online can also. See what I'm going to say. Um, so available networks, and I guess it's oh, it's, it's the training one. Connect, and then hopefully I'm in momentarily. Um, Carl, while we're waiting, I have a question. Please. Yes, please. Yeah. So if we appropriate uh, and then go to the uh, town meeting, yeah. 200000 for the transfer, I mean, for the uh, 
Oh, before oh, yep. uh, then you actually are going to go ahead with the loan and, and finance. Well, we would self finance. Right. We would self finance. We wouldn't get finance. So the eighty thousand, or what is that number? You're going to take about a hundred out of this each year. Yes. Yeah. But we would actually finance it out of that account, and it's an off-budget account. And I know this sounds crazy. We would go negative in that account. Okay? Um, and we probably end up going negative for one, like two years, and and then use the eighty thousand a year to just pay off. And so it's just self financing. Is there any time limit on the prices that we were quoted? Usually there is. Usually there is. I didn't. I didn't see that. You know, save no. that price in time. So, Not that I know. Okay. Yeah. Thought it was yeah, yeah, they're usually done. valid for uh, yes. a period of time. Yeah. Um, and the two year mark, that the other equipment will probably be paid off by then, too. That will, it will be May of 24. Okay. And then we're going to act upon this sometime in the next month or two. Right? That would be the idea. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Any questions for red? Any? Hey, what color is this flash pad going to be? Yeah. Bluish. 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 Yeah. That's the natural of the of the uh, material being used. You can get it any color. Okay. I just go with blue because that's your favorite colors. Does it save water by being blue? Does not save water. <laughs> I know that's going to be his next well, question. Well, my <laughs> there's nine recommendations. I don't think there's eight. Yeah, leave us that. There's yeah, the number the first one. I mean, the insure enough surplus plot funds are available to maintain the town's budget reserve is not in the motions requested. Well, number nine is a graduation. It is. It's not the way yes, the it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it drops to the bottom line. That's why. So it automatically does. That's where it goes. So $185,000. Yes, drops to the bottom line. It just drops to the bottom. So there's no So we don't need a motion. No, so if we did nothing with yeah. the circle, okay. there would be no motion. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So what I started to say, it, this may be new from a finance perspective, but I I would uh, project into the future that this is not the last time you're going to hear about this topic, whether I talk about it or not. Um, the and, and hopefully this presentation will give you some insight as to why that is. Um, you know, it's common to talk about trees and lawns in terms of municipal land management, but there's a lot more out there other than trees and lawns. And um, specifically, there is a category of plants called invasive trees, shrubs, and other stuff. And we've got a lot of it. <laughs> um, as I, as Carl mentioned that I've been involved and I have for years been involved with vegetation issues around the town. Um, I have been here 26 years. I have seen the changes. And so um, I, that may be my biggest qualification for giving this presentation. I need to um, set up a distinction though in your minds between a weed and an invasive plant. A weed is simply any unwanted plant, period. It could be the most wonderful plant in the world, but if you don't want it, it's a weed. But an invasive plant is a, a legal definition. And there are nine criteria. I'm not going to drag you through the nine criteria. That's all written up on the state website if, you, if that was of interest to you. Um, but these criteria are examined for every plant that's proposed for the invasive plant list. And it's decided upon by a group of people on the Invasive Plants Council. It's a group of mainly PhDs in various aspects related to land and plants. And they report to the legislature. And there are state statutes governing invasive plants as well as their disposal, both aquatic and terrestrial. Um, 
There are 96 listed invasive plants in the state. So there's, it's quite a big topic. Um, and, but here's the, the big headline for me. If you look at the Connecticut Invasive Plants Working Group website, and it's a group that I'm very active in right now, there's a quote there that I think says a lot about where this is going. Invasive plants are biological pollution. Um, and what I tell people is that they're a pandemic of the landscape. And we've just been through a pandemic. We know what that's like. Um, imagine if Pfizer and Moderna hadn't risen to the occasion and given us what they gave us. Well, you got some of the same thing going on with these invasive plants. So um, one of the big cost things that comes from it, one of the easiest costs to identify is simply what's going on at the transfer station. Um, I wrote an article recently for the Zippo 6. I don't know if any of you read my articles, but I was quoted Larry in there <laughs> saying, they just simply don't know what to do with all this stuff. They put it in a tumble grinder. It turns into what looks like mulch, but the reality is that the propagules don't die right away and the seeds can live for 30 years, quite literally. So it's a big problem for towns everywhere and it's a big problem here. Um, there's a group across the river called Mix the Knotweed. I'll talk about them very briefly in a few minutes, but look at all the black plastic bags. Well, guess where all those weeds are now going if you put them in black plastic bags? They're going to Ohio, to a landfill. Now, isn't that a great thing? <laughs> so you see, there are a lot of costs, but the biggest one, the one that just kind of really disturbs me is the loss of publicly owned spaces to invasive plants. This is land that we mutually own. And here's where Ray and I have had long philosophical conversations on this, but it's a land grab. It's just being performed by something that you can't go out and you know, write a citation to. <laughs> so you know, here's Founders Park. This is a water view of Founders Park. Founders Park, in case anyone doesn't know, is a landfill. It's a capped landfill and it's governed by the regulations that pertain to capped landfills. Um, I'll just throw in an aside, if any of you has ever heard of Mount Trashmore. Do you know Mount Trashmore in Virginia Beach? Okay, so that is also a capped landfill that functions very well as a park. I've been there. It is a park. It's got all kinds of activities and good things to do. But our land, uh, our capped landfill instead has a rather disturbing story uh, unfolding in it. So the Founders Park property, at 100 Coulter Street is 3.1 acres. It abuts the leaf composting facility at number 87, and that's 10 acres. It also almost abuts the Nature Conservancy's holdings along the river edge. Um, so that's our Founders Park. Now, what you're gonna see on the next screen is how much of it is covered in a mix of state-listed invasive plants. So out of uh, 3.1 acres in the park, 1.98 by my, my estimate, and this is really just an estimate, uh, is covered in a mix of invasive plants. And then there's an additional one acre that you see directly from the park and that Larry uses to access sections of the park um, that is on the uh, northeast side of it that's also heavily infested with the plants that I'm about to talk about. Now, if you, if you go up there to have a lunch or whatever, depending on when you go, this is the site you see. You see a, a neatly mowed hillside. And it looks like, well, what could be the problem? I have my view and it's all good, right? Well, it's not as good as it looks because when Larry doesn't have the equipment in repair or, or people quit their jobs, people call in sick. A couple of weeks ago, I was up there with him and this is what we were looking at. And that's a lot of biomass. That's a think about how much vegetation that is for him to cut and cart away. Now, we, we had a, a good conversation at the site a week or so ago because we have a project that may unfold in the very near future. Luckily, I was donated uh, literally one acre's worth of black agricultural plastic and Larry now has it um, to try to smother some of this stuff. But what happens is that he can't always keep up with the mowing schedule just to keep it in good appearance. But understand that underneath, it's not healthy stuff. 
Um, so here are the plants that we're mostly struggling with. And this is, I'm just using Founders Park as an example. Understand this is just one park in the town. So non-native invasive plants at Founders include Phragmites, knotweed, mugwort, and one of the worst in the country, Tree of Heaven. Um, I don't, if you haven't found it on your property yet, I predict that you will. I just, I've lived here 26 years. This year I've pulled 30 of them out of my front lawn just in the last couple of weeks, actually. Um, this is considered by many weed scientists to be the most virulent uh, invasive plant that we have in the country. So it's here and it's in our parks and our infestations are very advanced. And one of the most difficult things about them is that they're heavily intermingled in almost all areas. There are some areas that are still like pure mugwort and you can take a mugwort protocol and apply that protocol and you'll probably have success. But when you have four different protocols all bound up, like you see on the slide, um, you, a lot of the tricks and the tricks of the trade don't apply because you can't just apply and get success in one patch because they don't all respond the same way to a single technique. And so that's the condition that we have. Now, this is just one location. Others where I've observed what I consider to be pretty heavy infestations, Gardner's Landing, the Fort Saber Parks, the Town Park, the area adjacent to the Common Good Garden, Clothesline Marina, Cypress Cemetery, the school properties, all three of them, the library, the transfer station, Ingham Hill Road, I could go on and on, but <laughs> you get the idea. So this is a neighborhood issue. Um, this, uh, not too long ago, I got a, a note from Chris Costa because she had an applicant, uh, or actually somebody was beyond being an applicant, they had built and they wanted to put in privet hedges. Well, privet is one of those state listed plants. And she thought it might be, so she asked me, is it a state, yeah, a yeah, state listed plant, please don't let them plant privet. Why not? Because, you know, if you may have seen our pictures in the paper over the winter, we were having barbary cutting in the preserve all winter. Had like five major work sessions, got about 100 hours of labor out of volunteers. And we, we found privet all over the place in the preserve. Well, how did it get there? It's a, normally a residential ornamental plant. It gets there out of birds. They eat the seeds, they drop the seeds wherever they drop them. So we have privet inside the preserve. Um, so it is a neighborhood issue. And like with the Common Good Garden, I know they're kind of tearing their hair out by, because they want to open up more beds to produce food, but they're right up against major infestations. And they really don't know whose responsibility it is to remove those. And it's, it's a lot of energy and effort and they're resource strapped like, like everybody is. So best practices for this stuff, you've got three basic directions, strategic cutting, there are blanket methods and there are herbicidal methods. Um, there are key decisions that we would be facing in setting up a program for any one of these spots Really, you're, you're trading off between cost, speed, effectiveness, and safety. Because I have to bring up a word that often triggers really big emotions, and that's herbicides. Um, even though I myself, I've got this long heritage as an organic gardener, and as I, mean, I have a master's in ecological landscaping, and, and all this stuff, the reality is there are a few weeds, Phragmites and not weed or two of them, that respond to almost nothing other than an herbicide. And uh, it's a, an emotional issue for a lot of people. So having said all that, what would you anticipate as the process? Um, you have to anticipate, if you're gonna take it on, let's say that, you know, Ray said, let's do Founders Park. This is really worth improving because it's so beautiful. Um, you would have to anticipate keeping after it for three to five years. And so you really have to document what you do because personnel change and boards change. And so it, it requires a plan and somebody like say, okay, this is what we did this year. This is what the successes and failures were, all that good stuff. Um, takes only about a year or so, maybe two, depending on what you're dealing with to actually get a nice clear surface. But then you have to plant. You have to do a restoration planting. And that's a very specific type of planting. It's not just, 
oh, let's go cast a little grass seed and everything will be good. It's not like that. So, um, And then monitoring, spot removal, and annual mowing, and occasional reseeding. It gets easier. Um, funding elements that are involved in this. You have to have a plan. Just like Carl was saying, you have to have engineering for this. You have to have a plan. Now, the good news is it won't cost $80,000. <laughs> this is a plan that you can, you know, you can get somebody with a PhD to pull together for, you know, $3,000 or $5,000. This is not going to be in that league with a sidewalk. Um, the surface clearing phase is by far the most expensive. The restoration seating is a little less expensive and it comes in behind that. It does not all happen in the same year either. So it, it unwinds over this three to five years that I'm talking about. Um, then you just have to keep monitoring, which means somebody has to be assigned to do the job, whether it's a subcontractor or it's somebody on staff. And then you have to go out and remove the little seedlings that show up uh, because they will, because they're in the environment. And then the annual mowing, but we no longer doing every other week mowing and we're no longer carting all that biomass over to the transfer station where we face like sticky decisions. And then there's periodic reseeding. So I don't know what the total dollar amount would be, let's say for Founders Park, but what I'm here to do tonight is to say that it's worth doing. It is something that has been done before. Um, so there is a known path to success. And it's a question of saying, this is worth doing because the, the last part is, it will get worse if you don't do something about it. And that's the problem. Um, Tree of Heaven just advances itself by miles in a year. It will just march along and cover more and more territory. It's all up and down Route 95. It's in bloom right now. If you're not familiar with the plant, you're thinking you're not familiar with it. You are. You've seen it many times. <laughs> it's everywhere up and down 95. So um, it's something to consider. And then the last part is, I think we have to share it publicly before, during, and after the project, because it is a neighborhood issue. If, if you clean up a park and all the neighbors around don't do anything with their invasive plants, it comes right back in. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, that's, that's the main presentation. I have just a few slides here with a couple examples that I've been personally involved with. You may have heard of it, Old Lyme, Nix the Knotweed, 100% volunteer effort, where they go three times a year over three years and cut meat knotweed strategically at specific windows of time. Um, Clinton just came out with a program against knotweed that's on their, from their conservation commission. Um, I, I said, you know, we were in the woods cutting Barbary all winter. We went out five times. We had a ton of, half the volunteers came from other towns, not from Old Sabre. And they're coming because they're trying to learn. And so um, I consider it very successful, but you can understand that it's a, it's a slow go when you have to recruit volunteers to get the work done every time. This is the tarping method. This is the plastic that we brought to Old Sabre because we were done with the smother in Deep River. Um, so that's what it looked like. And that's what the hill, same hillside looked like after the tarp removal. There's still some material there after a year under a black plastic tarp, which we addressed with almost 100% with organic herbicides. And then um, this is what it looks like this year. They're turning it into a flowering meadow. This can be done. You can be successful at this. This is next to the Westbrook Post Office. Uh, you can go and so that was what it looked like in 2018. We smothered it with raw wood chips over cardboard for one year. And now if you go there, that's what it looks like. It's in full bloom right now. So it's the Westbrook Post Office. It, it's just a fun place to visit now. There's 8,000 square feet of pollinator gardens. Um, then finally, the preserve. You know, in 2016, we, we started, uh, let me go back to, yeah, we started in 2016. The, there was an area of the preserve that was literally impenetrable because of Japanese barbary. And, you know, that's a very thorny shrub. 
and, and you, you literally couldn't get into areas to even begin the process of weed removal. And so we did use two rounds of herbicide and then we used the tractor for major mowing. And since then it's all been cut, cut, cut. And we've gotten rid of many acres. This was the summer of 2019. Um, that's the same area that I showed you in the last slide. Look at all that barbary is gone. So you can be successful at this. So thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. Just, uh, first of all, that's wonderful. And thanks so much for, for your passion about this. Um, one message that I'm, I'm getting very clearly is we can put some public funds in to assist a public park. That's fine. But where the real value is going to be is when the private homeowner makes some decisions on what to do. Yeah. So is there a way to use whatever we do with the public funds and the public park to set that up as a training program, something so that in the same way that you had the volunteers learning and, and the preserve, that we could have homeowners who are interested, you know, and how do I get rid of that fragmite and how do I make sure it stays done, be part of that process or be educated so that they can do it? Because it seems to me that would have the greatest impact. That we, we could do it will that that's where it's at that's where it's at it's um without that it just comes right back mm -hmm. and so how do you do that i can tell you what's being done right now by the like i said connecticut invasive plant working mm -hmm. group um they've been holding workshops i did one in the preserve last year 17 people showed up they came from as far away as washington connecticut um to learn Everybody's trying to learn. Like I said, I think this is a pandemic of the landscape. We've hit a point where there's so much development and there's such a seed bank in the atmosphere and a lot of the stuff veget is vegetatively propagated, meaning it spreads by roots or by cuttings. And so it's, it's just going to advance its footprint. It's what it's gonna do. Mm -hmm. So everybody's reacting. And I think the only way to get ahead of it is like you teach people to recognize the top six plants in your town and you, yeah, like show up on Ingham Hill. Like there's a section of Ingham Hill. I just want to go there and say, people, why aren't you cutting your robbery? You know, because they probably don't know. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know. And it's, um, or they're overwhelmed. You know, with all that pragmatic, I think a lot of people just are overwhelmed by the amount so they I, don't get started. I agree. And yet, if we had been overwhelmed by the pandemic and decided, oh, well, it's over, I'm done, uh, whatever. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> here we wouldn't be. <laughs> so um, it's like that. It's just another challenge that is out there. So thank you. Yeah, appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Thank you. And and I just want to give a shout out to Ray. He's been amazing, an amazing support to all this stuff. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better town partner. Okay. Stop sharing. Oh, yeah. Oh, so we do we need to do these motions one at a time? Uh, or can we do them all like it's a glass? I mean, you can make the motion and then discuss and okay. take votes. Sure. I mean, you can do it as one, you can do it. In Last time we had four motions, you did them all at once. You, I don't know what you want to do here. Yeah. Unless some, could, could we have a motion uh, that would include all of these? Or does anybody want to take one out? Well, I'd like to hear what the park and wants to do yeah. more in depth. Oh, yeah, we, we could do yeah. that. Yeah. Right. But uh, let's get a motion on the table. Anyway, who's a member of the board? Thanks. Make a motion, take them one at a time, and so okay, make sure we understand. Okay, then uh, make the motion for the first one. 
Um, not uh, not number one, number two is the first one. No, where it says motions requested. Yeah, okay, yeah. motions requested. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So does Ricky make a motion? Do we need to vote on Ricky's motion? No, he hasn't made the motion. You just you take them and well, well, we'll make the motion for number okay, one. Can I do number one? Um, yeah, I, I just quite before we all right, we'll talk about it. uh to appropriate 125,000 from the from town surplus from the year 2022 and transfer said funds to an off budget fund called Main Street Paving for the purpose of repaving parking areas on Main Street. Further to move the transfer of the surplus funds to town meeting. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Did you watch step one today? Step one. That's the only one I'm second. <laughs> Carl, why wouldn't we just yeah. for the seventy-five thousand dollars difference? Why wouldn't we do Main Street, get it done with, and do it right the first time? Uh, I don't. I don't have an exact number. That's why I know it's more than this, and uh, prices have changed. Um, we might do this over the course of two years, uh, maybe, uh, because by the time we even think about well. Uh, because I can see as soon as you start one, everybody's going to say, well, what about my down well, here? What I, about I, my I'd here? be able to tackle the, the worst right now. Okay. And then um, I wasn't looking to ask for 250. You know, like, I don't know what the number is. That's why. But I know it's more than this. And I know this will get something done. Uh, and so it would probably be a two-year project. Okay. And I have to get a state permit. <laughs> yeah, go figure. Good luck. Yeah. No, they're, they're make, actually pretty good. Just in the from the point of view of discussion, for people who haven't been following what's been going on in the ARC committee, there's also a proposal, or a, I think will be a proposal, uh, that the town is making relative to work on, on the crosswalks. And I just think this this is a great idea. And I think that what we ought to do is think about all the different things we're going to be doing the Main Street and see whether we can coordinate on those activities all, all at the same time. Because I think at the end of the day, rather than tearing up this and then tearing up that, we could be able to make things go forward yep. fairly simply. Yep. yep. For coordination. Yep. yep. OK, are there any other, is there any other discussion on item one? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Item one passes. Could I have a motion on item number two to appropriate $100,000? I'll make a motion to appropriate $100,000 from the town surplus for year 2022 to the town share of granted uh, related expenses to fiscal year 23 and transfer the funds to the newly created off budget account called grant related projects to remove mm -hmm. the transfer of the surplus funds to town meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second. Any discussion? Any questions? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Item number two passes. Uh, number three, can I have a motion to appropriate the $250,000? Make a motion to appropriate the $250,000 $250, for the town surplus for for year ending 2022 and transfer said funds to the off budget fund called sidewalk construction for to move the transfer of the funds, surplus funds to town meeting. Do I have a second? Second. So uh, just quickly, we've been transferring money from the surplus if available for at least probably four years now, mm -hmm. four, maybe five. Um, and we've gotten a lot of work done and I think we all hear about it from our residents. Uh, I do anyway, I'm sure uh, some of you do too. People appreciate the ability to walk and it's not just recreation. Uh, people use it for work, people use it to go to school. Um, it's good for the able-bodied, it's good for the disabled-bodied. And um, where we've, and we're just really repairing sidewalks that were in disrepair. Um, so uh, I just wanted to comment, thanks for the years of cooperation on this, because I think we've really had an impact uh, in town. I had another discussion on that particular one. Go ahead. And 
although we're putting those sidewalks in, that's one of those things that uh, will incur additional money and effort right. from the town every year after that to maintain the sidewalks and when we have snow removal in areas where people don't remove the snow, like Route One going to the high school and stuff, so that's something we need. We've talked about before. Yeah, I mean, especially around the schools, you know, for the kids removing the snow. Yeah, correct. Uh, well, so when we have a bad snowstorm, we do hire some private contractors, uh, the skid steers, to go out and do it. Um, it's hard to get homeowners to do it. It just is. Um, I think you said last time, didn't we get Jesse Dibble to do that last time? I think Jesse yeah. did some of the sidewalks. Yes. Sometimes they volunteer their efforts and sometimes we pay. When we had a lot of snow, we were just like, we have to do this for schools to be able to open um, or for kids to get be able to get to school. We deal with that on a one-off basis. You know, if there's two inches of snow, we might not do it. If there's a foot of snow, we feel like we have to do it. Because no one else is going to do it. Anybody else have anything else? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, can I have a motion on uh, item number four? To appropriate the 50000 from the town surplus for, for year 2022 and transfer set funds to an off budget fund called vegetation management for the purpose of. Combating evasive plants and old saver further move the transfer of the surplus funds to town meeting. Do I have a second? Second. So uh, if I may, but, um, thank you. Um, what I would probably do is report back to the Board of Finance on a project that is chosen. Kathy's left. Maybe engage Kathy. Say, do you have someone who you recommend we work with? Uh, if not her, uh, you know. I'm, I know she was really happy with this, um, and it's she is amazing in the time she puts into the town uh, for free, really. I mean, she does a lot of work for the town. Um, sometimes she charges, and when she does, she's very inexpensive, but um, or I think a very good value to the town. So um, if we got a tree warden, why don't we have an invasive species warden? <laughs> well, we're not going to have an invasive species warden, uh, but we may. I will come to the board when um, we do work out of this fund because it's new and it's different, and it might be all over town. I, I just make that uh, commitment to the board. Carl, did I hear her say that she got Larry some black plastic already? Lay that on agriculture the, chart. Yeah, I think they're going to use it at Congress Park. Yeah, on, on the there. entrance on the left as you go up the hill ramp. On the I'm not sure where. I think that the where the photo was, and then um, so we don't know where if the fifty thousand is going to be used for materials or whether it's going to be used for um, herbicides or whether it's going to be so used. We'll, to, if we have a project, we'll come forward with a recommended project and. Detail how we're going to spend. Okay. Um, and it could be founders, it could be somewhere else. It may be, you know, uh, we need a thousand dollars quick in the preserve, you know, to because we need Freddie Castro to go <laughs> to go cut some Japanese Burberry yeah. or something. Um, so we we've, we've done mechanical cutting up there in the preserve as well as spraying when we first did that first three acre project. And, Every year we continue to do some mechanical cutting up there just to keep it down. So there's it's a year after year process. Mechanical cutting with human labor or yes. machine labor? Machine and human. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that is also so voted. Item number five. To appropriate $139,265 from the town surplus FY2022 for the purpose of providing capital to update various town parks and beaches and to transfer said funds to the park and rec sinking fund, further to move the transfer of surplus funds to town meeting. Go ahead, second. Second. <clears throat> and what, yeah, I'd like to know what the projects are. <laughs> yeah. So, um, one. One project would be updating the town beach bathrooms. Uh, right now, they're just town and Harvey's Beach. That's, there's two separate projects, but that's one of the projects. Each one of those bathrooms, as you know, are 
pretty old and outdated. So they're open um, stud patterns and I've closed them in with um, a PVC material um, to make it a bathroom so you can actually look nice in there um, and useful and easier to clean. Um, our issues at both of those beaches are FEMA funding projects. You only can do up to 50% of the value of the structure until you raise it up 14 feet. So we are limited in what we can do in both of those projects. Um, but by adding these materials, it'll aesthetically make it look better, easier to clean. It'll be a nicer area to go into in both of those. Uh, another project is to add solar uh, nope. cell phone. Nope. No, that's you not that You no. asked that one? That was deleted. Oh, geez. thanks, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> So you have um, what was the other one? You have Wi-Fi access and Wi-Fi access as parts of beaches, yeah. which is partly what it's in the memo. It's on page two, uh, partly for uh, us to go cashless. So, so we'd like to get good Wi-Fi down there, so we have we can use credit cards, only credit cards, mostly credit cards, maybe not only credit cards. Today, Melissa Lewis, who um, collected money, got money from you, and she was going to make the deposit. She comes into my office with two big blue zip bags of cash. Probably, uh, what do we say? Uh, don't, don't say I don't think we you should, should say that last yeah, yeah. No, no. I don't think you should discuss this anymore. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. But, I mean, we're trying to get, we're trying to, uh, go let cashless or at least make our credit card systems, which we're implementing, mm -hmm. uh, already implemented where? On Park and Rec yep. um, at Mini Golf and in, in, in the uh, Park and Rec facility transfer station. And uh, we have about six more areas that are being set up. Transfer yep. station is not operational at this point. It is? It is, it is not because we're getting a new cash register. So okay. um, it's the same it's as the tax department. Are you using the same type of information, the same vendor? Um, no, it's going to be different. Mm -hmm. It's a little different. Each area is going to be looked at for how we best can set that up the best way. What other purposes? Um, the Wi Fi, I mean, just cellular service, I assume, right. for yeah. emergencies. And or camera access to. Oh, camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we don't have that ability at any other parts right now. So we need to have that for security purposes. And then you have technology up upgrades to Vicki Duffy. The pavilion right now has just a Wi Fi access, but we would hold meetings down there, but we can't because we don't have this setup at all. Um, and people do request. Um, and they do rent it out to have a sound system. We don't need to have that there. So to have these upgrades there, we just add to the building in general. So we do have a lot of meetings that do take place down there, but we don't have any of those. Will, will you be charging more if you present, if you supply the sound system? Uh, that'd be up to the commission at this point in time, but um, that, that hasn't really crossed the, the threshold on that one. So I know that um, one of the town committees in town wanted to hold meetings down there or frequently does hold meetings down there and they wanted to have this ability to do that and we don't have that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking about the two dollars on the mini golf that they, yeah. you know, whether or not they charge more for the, if you set up a system for that. Yeah, so I know some of the hotels and stuff charge extra. For that. Yeah. 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 Um, and the other project would be fencing mm -hmm. at the mini golf course. Um, as of right now, if you're in the parking lot and you're looking at the fence right in front of you, uh, it, it's just not strong enough. It's <clears> been <throat> 10 years now and the gates itself, they just barely lock as it is. They're not very secure. Uh, we have a lot of people that do jump over that fence and our, our security system, you know, we have cameras uh, in the back of the course in general, they jump over that. So I'd like to raise that fence up and add security measures to the fence to make it stronger because there's a lot of bowing in it right now. And the gates itself, there are a two gate system, and we make it a one gate system to make it a lot, a lot easier um, to make it secure. Uh, we found that our staff actually locks the gate, and we found it open in the morning, and it's not their fault, <laughs> just because it can get open the way that the gate system is. And then the last one is the splash pad. And the, and the, sorry, the splash pad resource. Any more questions? On that I one question. Ready to resurface on the splash pad. 
it'll be the same exact footprint. Uh, I thought you talked about making it a little bit bigger. No, it'd be the same footprint. Okay. Yeah, not adding to the splash by all. It's just right now it's just concrete surface. It does get slippery. Um, kids do fall on it. It's dangerous. So this is a, a material that's softer um, and more traction. Basically, so like a rubberized, uh, yeah, you know, like so kids can run on it. Yeah. And if they do fall, they don't scrape their knees or bang their heads. And you were saying it may be done by October, right? Yeah, if, I mean, we get some funding. Yeah. Right Would you want to do it this season? I'd, I'd ask the guy whether he preferred in the spring. I, I think it's easier to do in the fall when the weather's better. As the spring, you um, you don't know, you know. Thank you. Does that go over what's there now, or does it does? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's goes right over. Yeah. Ray, how much money is still left in that account for the path? Uh, I have to look the exact numbers. It's around nine thousand. Oh, okay. Ray, you know what the assessed valuation is of the town beach, uh, the Harvest Beach? I do. I do. They would definitely need more than twelve thousand dollars worth of help. It doesn't have a high value. No, they don't. I, I know they don't. that. Um, Harvey's Beach is assessed. Uh, our threshold would be twenty eight thousand dollars worth of work we could do to it. So it's so a fifty six thousand dollars. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then Town yeah. Beach is actually less than that. Yeah. So we were going to we were five. going to propose a bigger project at Harvey's Beach, yeah. and then we realized that we can't unless we. The threshold for town is fourteen thousand. Wow. Yeah. Second question is on the fence from the mini golf to the railing on the river. Mm -hmm. What are your plans there? Wait, so because there's a gap. There's a gap on one. You had a you had a gate that's gone. So you're talking between the dock and dock property? No. No. Well, it's the river. Yeah. Then you have the fence from the river park to the end of your fence. Right. That would be uh, that would be replaced as well. Because right now it's we the fencing the actual chain link mechanism. People just keep taking down whatever I know, put up there. I know. So it would be it would be done differently. We're actually going to put more railings into it, so it'd be harder to undo the wrappings. It's yeah. amazing people just take it down and just walk through it. And we've oh, I know. I know. constantly fixed it. Constantly. Wait, do we have any signs there? Uh, we did. <laughs> so if we replace the signs also, then well, they we got don't know in advance the that they're doing something. They not got tossed in the river, so yeah. I decided not to put them back up. Both of them. <laughs> yeah, nice sign that says don't break the fence. Yeah. Don't <laughs> 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 Police are monitoring. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Smile, you're on camera. It's not on this list, but how's the um, disc golf? Uh, disc golf, we've cleared all the holes that need to be cleared, the fairways and whatnot. The, the baskets are in. We're working on the tee boxes as we speak. Cool. Um, the goal is October to have that finished up. So, Anything else? All those in favor of item number five? Signify by saying aye. 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 Item is passed. Item number six. To we'll appropriate $200,000 from the town surplus for year 2022 for a Department of Public Works sweeper and transfer the funds to the DPW Equipment Capital Fund 3353 for the move transfer of surplus funds to the town meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. okay. And you're going to finance the rest of that, you think? We'll self finance it. Okay. So our, we'll, we'll self finance it. We've done that and we did that with fire trucks. We did that years yeah. ago. We did it. Um, but Leanne, you're, well, I don't know if you're, you're comfortable with it. You want to yeah. talk about that? Mm -hmm. So um, I don't have exactly how much money we have in the account right now. But let's say it's like 100, 130000 mm -hmm. We still owe $75,000. For this May 23rd, uh, 2023, and then 75,000 May 2024 for the last financing of the equipment that we purchased. And um, this body puts money in every single year, you know, $70,000 towards the Department of Public Works equipment. So what would happen is the balance would go negative, and then a couple years later it would come back into positive territory. So we're self-funding. 
through that me mechanism. So when would you actually be replacing? Well, we go to town you have to go after to town the meeting. meeting. I mean, right. yeah. Um, well, Larry would put in an order. I don't know. Okay. How, you know, I don't know. You're probably looking at what forty, fifty thousand dollars for the old one. There'd be a yeah, trade in, right? I mean, I didn't even think about that. I is it worth that much? Oh, well, I think you'll be surprised. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That would all, and that would go into this account and we okay. would offset it. Yes. Right. Yeah. Good point. Didn't, didn't think about that. We would definitely not want to have two. No. No. So we ha have $195,000 in that account right now because we just topped it up with our $75,000. So. so why? So so we, we still owe $150,000 for the yeah. next two years. But we're, we're only paying seventy five or so a year. Two more years. So yeah. if we appropriate $200,000, we're going to use whatever excess funds in mm -hmm. there. So it's yeah. really, it won't, it'll barely... Barely be negative. Yeah. That's why I'm comfortable. With yeah, that. right. <laughs> right. I didn't realize there was that much of that. So. Yeah. Any other questions or comments on this item? There's none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Item number six has been approved. Item number seven. To appropriate $245,560 from the town surplus FY 2022 to the Board of Education and transfer the funds to a newly created account entitled Air Quality slash HVAC Improvements, further to move the transfer of surplus funds to town meeting. I second that. Brad seconded. Okay. Any questions? Any discussion? Well, I had some questions. Okay. <laughs> We thought about one particular school to start with, and the, the state was talking about some funding. Would be any chance that we can get any of that? We're working on that. So yes. like a, a percentage matching or something. It's a grant application that's um, would have to come back to to the um, town's governing body. You have to establish a building committee. You have to prepare schematic drawings. You have to. It's a very complex project, just like a building project. Okay. And they have not committed to exactly how much. It's not matching, I can tell you that. Um, from what we've heard, it's a uh, percentage of our uh, normal reimbursement. Um, and so, you know, we don't know exactly um, what that number is going to be, but it's it's a it's a fairly small percentage. So this have to does this have to be like Tyler talked about earlier, a shovel ready project that the, so once you start and you've got the engineering in for the roof and everything, then they may decide to give you some. So it's yes, it's, it's retroactive. So the project that we're working on now, which is Goodwin School, would be eligible for reimbursement once we go through all the steps of this process that the state is outlining. Um, you know, we could put an application in and we could get some of that money back um, after it's completed. And the others, um, the middle school and the high school would follow suit, but we have to do quite a bit of engineering work as Carl talked about. I've got to get, you know, Jane and I have to figure out who can engineer these projects and give us an estimate and know what we're, what we're talking about for dollars down the road. Thank you. Is that a competitive grant or is that... Just uh, it'll be you. You know, it's eight percentage of what you would otherwise get. Not a competitive grant. Not it is, however, based on what we would typically get, which is <laughs> not, not much. <laughs> uh, question for you: the the other account that we've talked about in the past with regards to that surplus, we talked about using that towards the mm -hmm. air conditioning, possibly yes, correct. So we need um, the the ESSER funds that we got. Um, you know, from the federal government, the account you're talking about, we would use pretty much all of that, leaving perhaps a small amount in there for special ed, you know, unexpected, un you know, expected tuitions. And then this um, remaining 200,000, we've already received, um, just to give you some dollars, we've already received the bid for the um, piping, if you will, and getting the um, air conditioning to the um, inside of the building into every classroom is $1.1 million. We, the chillers were $260,000. And then we have electrical work, which is at this point, I don't, I don't even venture to, get, to guess what the cost of electrical equipment after we just have been working on the high school project, but it's, it's 
definitely in the you know, 200 plus thousand dollar range for electrical. It's, it's Goodwin happens to be, I believe it will be more than any other school simply because it didn't have the power in the beginning to be able to even house the, the amount of, of draw for these. Two eighty-ton units that are going in. So, but, okay. Julian, you may may tell us that the uh, Goodman is unique to the extent that their heatings are individual. It's not forced hot air through the whole system. Correct. It's it's yeah. their their unit ventilators. It'll have a coil. Um, the coils have been ordered. That's part of that one point one million dollars. Coil goes into each unit for cooling purposes. The piping comes from the roof down into each unit. It's a it's a pretty big project. Yeah. Whereas a couple of the other schools, those are four side air, aren't they? No, no. Um, they're actually all a bit different, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> High school has unit ventilators. Um, middle school is a very different, um, it'll be a very different system at the middle school. And that may be more of, may look more like a forced hot air system, but they're all going to be engineered <clears throat> slightly different. I know I've been in the Goodman School in a couple of tours recently, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure if anybody else has been, uh, but I just wanted to have the opportunity to bring that out. Thank you. Yeah, and you know, we always are welcome, welcome anyone who wants another tour. Yeah. So, what's the total cost of Goodman? About 1.5? 1.6, 1.6 plus. Yeah, it's significant. Anybody else? I have. Two quick questions. So the transfer would be this uh, air quality slash HVAC improvements account would be a board of education account. It would be on it's your on side. It's on the town side. side. Yeah. It's going to be on our side. Yeah. We'll, we'll come to you for relatively quickly. We anticipate <laughs> this project to be done that summer, hopefully by the end of next summer. But you would hold those funds and we would come we to would you. We would hold them on our side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Is it like an account that has a million dollars in it now? It's the same That's account. a different account. That's a different this is account. A, a named project account, which we're trying to follow the same process that you are using for your projects as we go forward, naming dollars to accounts for specific projects. So that's what that's so the beginning are, of that. Are you saying you cannot use a million dollars toward the expense? We could. Toward? We could come and ask you for some of that too if we need it, and we may. <laughs> You know, again, yes. the electrical so piece, restricted. yes, that has a sort of a blanket use for, you know, paving, boilers, HVAC. It was a, a an account kind of created in a blanket format for a number of different projects. Electrical was part of that. So depending on how we end up with the electrical piece of this project, we know all the other pieces right now. We may need a little bit of additional money, and that would be the other source that we would have to request from you as well. Okay. Anybody else? When's this next summer? It's, it's started already, but it will continue into next summer. We're hoping we're hoping to be done next summer. Rick will appreciate this. We ordered the chillers in March. They'll be mm. in next May. Mm. <laughs> you hope. <laughs> we hope. Right. Yep. Well, the Kate, um, same thing. The Kate ordered a chiller. They were their chiller is just okay. It got them through, it's getting them through the season. But with uh, Neighborhood Assistance Act money, they were able to get a new chiller and they ordered it in, I want to say March. Mm -hmm. It's coming in October. Oh, well, you're lucky. That's great. Yeah. Smaller unit, maybe, yeah. and, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. But uh, they didn't have it for this season. And they yeah. made, looks like they're going to make it through. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Anybody else? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, item seven has been approved. Item eight. To appropriate 366824 from the town surplus for year 2022 to capital non-reoccurring non fund 3350 further move the transfer of surplus funds to town meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Just instead of having it go to the bottom line, putting it into a capital non-recurring fund. So if we identify capital needs, um, from one dollar to whatever it is, or a selectman, uh, or finance, or a selectman town meeting. So, uh, I'd like to offer uh, an amendment to this one. 
and following up on what Carl just said about uh, potential capital expenses. I think all of us received a letter from the chairman of the police commission uh, concerning a, a request for $50,000 for some studies that the police commission um, wants to do. And I, I know, um, Paul, you've been following it, but maybe others haven't. But the commission back in December of 2020 uh, approved the, uh, the purchase and installation of a new uh, next gen system, which is a personnel tracking system. Um, it cost the town $150,000, and it's now being uh, implemented over the summer. And the good news, exciting news for Old Saybrook is that part of that system we're actually pioneering, even though it's been implemented in other parts of um, the state. Uh, this whole area around the use of administrative time, the information that is going to be coming out of that, we're the, effectively the data site for, for that to happen. Um, and so what I believe and what I understand from listening to the police commission uh, um, tapes is that with the significant more data available, now what we need is we need some help, I think both the chief as well as the commission in understanding that, that data. Data is fine, but if you don't have anybody to interpret that data, to analyze that data, and frankly, to give you practical solutions based on that data, um, the data is, isn't all that useful. And so that is wrapped into what the chairman of, of the police commission is asking for. It, um, we have, a, you know, we're sitting here in August, but the budget season, as Leanne knows, starts in just a couple of months. And um, to be able to have this uh, data available and somebody helping us understand that data as we prepare the budget for 2023-24 uh, would be um, very helpful. And I think the, the other side of that is that all of that information now becomes the foundational information for this you know, long discussed um, structure and staffing study that has been, um, been out there. The police commission tabled uh, moving that forward because they were gonna go forward with a, a CALEA accreditation. That CALEA accreditation is no longer a requirement at the state level, thanks to Carl and his buddies for lobbying against them. And so um, now, though, we, that means we still have this need to have a better understanding of the structure and staffing. And now we'll have the data upon which to do that. So my motion, after all of that, um, is to, uh, instead of the 366,824 uh, going to the uh, capital non recurring would be to uh, provide $50,000 for the purposes of the police commission in uh, providing outside consultant help and for 316824 to uh, go into the capital non recurring. Wouldn't this have to be on the agenda? It is on the agenda. We're just talking about it. Okay. So it's been moved and seconded, right? Um, Mike? Comment to you is all the other consultations that we've done previously, including Ray and everybody else that come in with an RFP and ask specifically for an amount and what those things are going to be for. Uh, and I, I received a letter from uh, the chairman. Oh, we all did. We all did? Yeah. Yes. And uh, I spoke to him. As a matter of fact, I was going to mention it under uh, chairman's comment. He's coming in on our September 20th meeting to explain what it is he wants and the reason for it. He, I asked him to come to the, the meeting on the second, of our first meeting, and he's gonna be away. But he is going to be here to discuss what it is he wants and uh, why. Uh, if we proceed with this, my understanding would be the money would be there in the capital non-recurring. We could always transfer it out of there for whatever purpose the Board of Police Commission needed it. If, we were such a so agree. Just by putting it in capital recurring, we don't preclude it from going there after uh, Mr. Wilcox comes in and gives us his presentation. 
Right. Yeah. Let me go to um, Rick's question. I mean, it's a little bit like, do you walk into a restaurant without checking whether you got money in, in your wallet? You know, and to, for this situation, where some of these other con consultations, people knew they had money in the budget and they were just going out and getting the RFP. In this case, this is, there has not been a commitment of funding. So this would be a commitment of funding so that they know when they go out to the RFP and frankly, the responders know that this is not just a, you know, a wild goose chase. This is a, a real life thing that's going to happen. Well, I think everybody's across the board. You know, Carl has a said, you come with a program and bring it forth, there's going to be support. But I think we all want to know what we're spending our money on. Well, if 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 there is in around this table that perspective, then um, I'm fine with that. But I I've not heard that around this table, so I so, want to make sure. So um, I met with the chairman. Also, I've met with him a lot over the last um, month, um, working on some other things. Um, trying to work with him and uh, some counsel on a few things. Uh, and my perspective is, is if, if the police commission, and they're quite capable, the police commission in the past has put forward an RFP. If they put forward an RFP for a specific purpose and they vote, um, say, hey, you know, XYZ consultants came in and they proposed to do this study with NextGen for $22,500. Although, and the police commission votes it and it gets recommended here and this commission votes it, it isn't going to stop at the board of selectmen. You know, I mean, if it, if it goes through the processes like we've done with our other consultants, it'll go to town meeting. Like everything else, I mean, and I said that to the, uh, the chairman, and that may be the conversation that Paul had with the chairman. I thought he was okay with that, personally, but maybe he wasn't. Um, I know he sent that letter last week, or in the last week or two. Yeah, I talked to him half the yeah, letter. Yeah. So, and he seemed fine with that course of action. I don't want to misrepresent it. But I, I, from my conversation with him, I thought that uh, that's the way he wanted to proceed was to come to our meeting, make his pitch, and then go from there. And like I said, the money will be in the capital non-recurring. We can always remove it from there to a project if we need to. It's not like uh, it, it won't be there. Recognize that. So, Carl, from process standpoint, the process would be police commission to the board of selectmen to the board of finance right? uh police commission would recommend it um they can if they recommend it they can actually probably come directly to you know if they get an rfp out and they get a bid for twenty five thousand, they can come directly here they come directly here and then it would go to the board of selectmen for a call of the town meeting discussion and call I had a question, Bruce. Bruce, what what I believe you're saying is, or what I, I interpreted was that we want to hire uh, somebody to interpret the data coming off of next gen. That, yeah, I, and let me say assist because clearly, you know, this it's the people within the uh, Department of Public Safety they'll they'll have their information, but you know, to a large extent, having some experience outside the world of old Sabre to be able to look at this information is going to be critical. So it's it's assist in that in, in interpretation. So this gener this information that's generated and the taxpayers are paying for, would we be able to have complete access to that information? I'm sure it's public information. Based on what the police commission is able to release or not choosing to release. Yeah, well, I, we don't know that. Yeah, you're asking you're asking the wrong person because right. I don't know what personnel information is in there and that kind of stuff. But I think the important thing is that right now there's, I mean, I, I, I'll say this positively. They there is time spent in and out and allocation of money for time spent without clear tracking of what's happening during that time today. 
And so the ability of the system is to be able to better understand that. And so then can make some decisions about, you know, how long patrolmen are out and, and, and that kind of stuff. And that would be very helpful. I, and I don't know the answer to this. So if anybody wants to, uh, when is the next gen system going into effect? It's currently in effect. It, it is. How long has it been? This, the it's of, this summer. It's I was going to say, that's, 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 that's yeah, I was just wondering how much, how long it would take to generate enough information for a consultant to be able to make a judgment on it. Well, I was thinking six months, that way it would okay. be able to be ready for the, you know, go into the budget discussion. Well, certainly it would be good to know how long an officer spends for a cat in a tree or how long an officer takes to write a report after an incident occurs or how long a motor vehicle stops for a routine motor vehicle stop. That information is all trackable. Right, right. And, and so we'll now what management does with it. I would caution you only to use six months though because of our town being as popular as it is during the summer and being in that position over there across the street and understanding that big difference during the summer compared to the winter. Mm -hmm. You might want to seriously consider a full year's worth of data before you jump or, or some level of extrapolation. Right. And, they, and these are the kind of questions on the 20th that we could ask. Right. You will, you'll probably have a better perspective. One question. Uh, I have not seen the police commission discuss this in particular. I haven't watched every minute of every meeting. I've watched several of them. Uh, is there, has it been highlighted that there is an issue mm -hmm. interpreting the data? Uh, no. 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 Okay. I, I, I didn't know. So, so if, if it indeed does that tracking, has that, been, has that been reported to the Board of Police Commissioners that the data is, by the chief, I presume, saying, hey, I am... Uh, getting getting the data, I'm interpreting the data. Is he given a report on the data? I don't know. I'm, yeah, these are all these are all questions. Yeah. I, I, I okay. don't know the answer. Right. And I, I don't know. That's why I would just suggest that you put money in the uh, reserve account mm -hmm. and wait yes. to the chairman of the board, the police commissioners, to answer the questions and tell us what it is he wants, uh, and then we can go from there. If Okay, so I just want to, I'll make the statement and you tell me whether or not the statement I'm making is, is incorrect. And that is that the, the sense I'm getting from, from the Board of Finance is that if the police, given what we know, police commission goes through its process, does an RFP, gets a, an amount, we are willing to support the police commission's effort in moving something forward out of the um, capital non-recurring fund. Yeah, I'm not willing to make that commitment. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, you're gonna, you're I'm gonna, not asking you're gonna agree to it and then it'll be up to the town to decide. Okay. I don't know that this board can pre-commit to voting. I'm, I'm, no, I'm, 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 no. I'm not saying, I'm just saying that there's a, this lean. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not asking for a commitment. I'm just versus absolutely not. It's never, never going to see the light of day. Understood. I think the board is open minded. Right. I mean, can't we have to, Commissioner Wilcox is going to be in here. Yeah. And then, I mean, I, I will say in the meeting this came up, there were multiple numbers thrown around. First, it was 20, 70, 50. So, and, and I'm not, right. I'm, I'm open to listen. I, I mean, I'm more than happy to listen to them and, and ask some questions, to be honest with you, because I think the next gen software. Is probably pretty useful to the town, mm -hmm. but I think we should ask those questions directly okay. to him and the chief if the chief wants to come in. So, based on that, I'll, I'll withdraw my motion. The second withdraw. Second that. You second that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the original motion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, Liam, was there anything that you had that you wanted yeah. to Yes. Okay. Because yeah. okay. we kind of skipped over here. That's okay. And yeah, and I, will, I will try to go quickly because I know everybody's tired. But 
Um, I do have a couple things I want to say. I'm going to start with last fiscal year. You already spent all the money. Good job. Okay. So, but, um, and, and I wrote a memo, and I think it was quite clear about where the money came from, from revenues, from expenditures, how much was the Board of Ed, and how much was the town. So I'm not going to read the memo back to you. But I want to um, go over one more piece of business uh, for fiscal year end, and that is... Uh, uh, we do a transaction. Yes, that's what I think. Uh, we do a transaction every single year that is uh, board of finance approved. And I'm at um, talking about the memo that says fiscal year 2022 year end transfers. And that's about the police department transfers and the and family transfers. So hot off the press are the numbers for the uh, police department. 58,898 for um, the police. Um, outside services uh, uh, number, um, excuse me, for both numbers of which 55,818 is for the um, outside services. That number has already come into, not, you haven't seen it yet, um, but we just posted it the other day and we put that money towards the gasoline and the vehicle repair in the police budget. Um, and the 3,080 went towards the salary line in the police budget. So therefore, the police uh, budget is now has a larger surplus uh, than it did before by 58,898. That in the memo that you all just talked about has not been included. So um, that's going to either drop to the bottom line or perhaps go to capital non recurring or whatever you all decide to do with that. Um, that's in my mind still outstanding. Can I, can yes, I just go ahead. Very briefly address that. So uh, Leanne made me aware of this either yesterday or late last week, uh, and um, it was suggested that, um, and I talked to the superintendent uh, earlier today, that the $58,000 be put into a fund because we know the software and security cameras, the upgrade, and this would be a board of ed town project. So it's not, but the dispatch department, the dispatchers are the ones who monitor. So we thought <clears throat> maybe that, what? That $58,000 um, could be appropriated towards a named fund for, and it doesn't have to be. I'm, I'm, this is kind of like hot off the press. Towards that, software upgrade, security camera upgrade, knowing that it's probably gonna be more than a $58,000 project, even with multiple bids. Um, we thought it made sense like that, doesn't have to go like that, but we thought we'd recommend it. The superintendent <clears throat> liked the idea. Um, this is a town project, you know, we'll probably end up paying uh, for the entire upgrade, not ask the Board of Ed to contribute. Um, and given that the police department is at the center of it, or the at least the uh, dispatchers are, um, we thought we'd make that recommendation. So go ahead, I mean, okay. so, so we can come back to that. Thank you, Carl. Um, and then off budget is youth and family. And so they had a um, surplus of 16,645, and that has been transferred into the income fund, just as we do every single year. Um, a portion of that came from us, um, extra revenues received, and a portion of that came from an underspend of their expenses. Um, so um, very close to budget, but we, our youth and family income fund is now $80,000. $80, so um, that has happened. And, and again, the fiscal year and results are preliminary. They're, they are not completed until December when our auditors sign off on them. Um, I don't think that there's going to be anything else major occurring after this happens. I think that's pretty much it. So I have some new numbers for you. Um, so for, uh, it, you know, on the um, little chart that I have on the preliminary financial results, general government, our revenue surface surplus is going to stay the same, 1163101 our expenditure surplus with the addition of the almost $59,000 is going to go from 252,000 to 311 887,000. So the total surplus for the town is going to be 1,474,988. There has been no changes to the board of education 
So the town's total surplus is now 1,725,48,58,899 higher um, than you saw prior. Question for you. Mm -hmm. The vehicles, were those included or the vehicles sold? Where did that money get? That's all off budget. Because it's, right. it's a, a multi-year, it's turning into a multi-year process. Um, so we took the funds of, um, so we we had in escrow at, um, I forget the name of it, where's that key, is it key? Key Bank. Key bank. Um, we put the money in escrow that we borrowed for the police vehicles. Then we took an off budget account and we let it go negative. And then when we amassed $400,000 of car purchases, we um, requested our escrow account and then cleared that up. Um, there continued to be more um, purchases for equipment and outfitting of the cars. And then we started to sell the cars and then the proceeds from the cars are going into that account. So it all takes place off budgets because we don't want it to affect the general fund, the bottom line, the general fund, um, because in the year that we spent 400,000, it would have been negative the year that all the money comes in. Could we get a breakdown of these expenses on those new vehicles and all the extras that were put into them? I will work with the chief on that. I have I have the bills. I don't know like what goes with what car and all of that. So the reason why I'm saying is we left a lot of radios in the cars that were sold, mm -hmm. but yet all the new vehicles obviously have radios in them because they're mm -hmm. being used. So just would like to see you know where the expenses are and how much that costs. Okay, so uh, you want to know for each car? Well, no, total. I mean okay. for okay. for outfitting the cars, what. What did we agree to? Okay. And okay. what was included in that number? Actual versus budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I, I guess, uh, I think, at least I was thinking the money was coming back from the vehicles and those were going to go into, we go to the bottom line or back into another. I, don't, I didn't know that it was going to be used for, for his own yeah. equipment. Well, that's that was supposed to be all part of the price that we all agreed to on individual vehicles because we agreed to go to the bigger vehicles. Right. He gave us a bottom line number. Now we're taking the vehicles that we thought were going to come back to us as a had surplus. And now that money's also going into these vehicles. So I really wonder what these vehicles actually cost us. Yeah. Because I mean, the fact that we're selling radios that could be used in multiple other parts of this town just blows my mind that we're doing it. I have a question on using families. Yes. I'm not sure what the uh, revenue surplus of 78.2. Where where's that money? Is it going back to use the family services or going to uh, uh, surplus service? So um, youth and family services is an off budget account that we have there. So all the revenues that they get, grants, the appropriation from the town, um, their client fees goes into this one account, and they have their expenses. Just sounds like a little mini general fund. So at the end of the year, they have a surplus or a deficit. And um, a, a lot of things have contributed to the reasons why every year they have a surplus, mainly COVID and all of the pro programs that didn't happen. Employee so, turnover. Employee to turnover, all those things. So we've been funding this employee income fund, and it's now up to $80,000. It's um, next year, if they have a deficit, we would take money from that income fund and cover the deficit. What is an employee income fund? Youth and Family Services Income Fund. Did I say employee? I'm sorry. Thank you for that correction. So you have a fund that's for their budget. They have a de deficit or a surplus. If they have a surplus, it goes into the Youth and Family Income Fund. If they have a deficit, it goes from the income fund into the budget to cover it. So the Youth and Family budget ends up at zero every year. So the income fund is money that they can still access? They cannot access that, but unless they have a deficit. Or if we come to the Board of Finance and say, hey, we want to spend on a project of some sort. So it's money set aside in mm -hmm. case they exceed their budget. Correct. That's Board of Finance approved that that's how that mechanism would work. So Heather came in here uh, and asked for a little bit more money for this year's so remember, Tom, I think the total department, let's call it 400000 okay? The town puts in, I'm just going to use rough numbers. I know they're not accurate. 
the town appropriates in tax dollars, 200,000. Youth and Family says, we estimate in grants, insurance fees, everything else, we're gonna bring in 200,000 and our budget's gonna come in at 400,000 because on you know, the expense side, they know what they're gonna spend in, in salaries, insurance and all that. On the revenue side, uh, they need town revenue and they need grants. And when you, if someone goes and sees someone at Youth and Families, insurance can pay for that and they get revenue that way. Um, Heather came in last year because she said, grants are drying up. I'm going to need more money from the town. Uh, and more money was appropriated actually for the 23 budget, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we're going to need more money this year. So we appropriated more funds. If, in fact, uh, they were to get grants that they didn't expect to get, that grants could get cut, they're going to come in, over, they're going to have a surplus. However, if um, for some reason grants that they expected didn't come in, they're going to have negative. So this account, this $80,000, has been built over a few years because they've had surpluses. Um, should and we moved everything off budget because the budgeting to keep it on budget was very difficult. So about five years ago, we said, let's just have the town do one appropriation off budget and this can all be done off budget. Um, if, uh, you know, I don't know how much money we should accumulate in that account. I guess. Well, we did use 15,000 of it this year to support the, bu the budget. Okay. Remember they had a large increase, so we did so we did use some money, I guess, off there. I mean, right. so it's 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 a it's a fund to keep youth and family level should they be in deficit. And when they're in surplus, it goes into that fund for future years in case they're in deficit. But again, the question would be, how high do we let that go? You know, maybe I don't know if this is your question uh, or comment, uh, but maybe. It should be capped at 40 or 50, mm -hmm. and maybe 30 should I don't know, come, come back to the right. town. I, don't I wasn't know. sure if this was an example of somebody I know who talked about free money at one time. Free cash money. Yeah. Yeah. Free cash money. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know, man. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, What's that? You have a good memory. <laughs> but, oh, um, you know, would, would this surplus for, let's say, use the family service or anybody else, we do this up? If they're exceeding their budget, do they have to come to the board of selectmen, the finance director, and the board of finance? If they exceed, tap into that. Account. No, no, because that's already board of finance approved okay. several years ago. So the answer to your question is no. So maybe in let's say in 2023, they come in fifteen thousand dollars over, like they generate a surplus. Maybe we let that drop to the bottom line next year, right? As a book, because it's at eighty grand and. Or we use it to offset the budget like we did this year. Or something like that. But, but also, Does I, that make sense? I'm I trying do. to. Well, I understand what you're talking about, but when Leanne yeah. writes up some of these things, it goes over my head. I'm. I you're not the only one. I yeah. think that's you're man enough to admit it, and I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and it's new for you, too. I mean, I, I know it is. Yeah. But this is, this is my obligation to report to the Board of Finance. These year end transactions that have been pre approved. So, so you will always see this. You'll always see this. Are they automatically done or they, they have to be voted? No, nope, it's automatically done. This is a mechanism. It's getting, it was proposed as a mechanism. This will happen. Now, as Carl said, you can, you can always decide what you want to do with that as income plan. So. No, I'm just, you know, here I'm seeing another, what's going on with the police department now? Did you say 50, 58,000? You know, I'm, I am concerned about the fact about these vehicles because the money didn't come back. He hasn't put any more on for sale that I've seen online. And we were told we were going to get a certain amount of money back to begin with. And it looks like we're not going to see that either. What so do you mean a certain amount of money back? He, he guaranteed a minimum of $45,000. He and he's already exceeded that. I think. Where? With it, the sale of his vehicle and several other vehicles, he's like already at like forty thousand. Right, and where did that money go? It's my understanding. It's in this account that I'm talking about. Everything's going through this one account, the police vehicle account. 
I can see all the ins and outs. I will get that. Okay. okay. And we still got what five more vehicles, six more vehicles at that stop. So. It looks that way. <laughs> Driving by. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just, yeah. I, you know, we made some agreements. I just want to make yeah. sure that both sides hold up the agreement. That's all. I'm not trying to create trouble for anybody. No, just, not at all. What we agreed to, we want to make sure is helped. That's all. So, Leanne, yes, so the money from the sale of the cars, was that put in towards the gasoline, et cetera, et cetera? Or is no. that still separate somewhere? Separate. Okay. Is a, a fund called police vehicle purchases. Okay. Purchases. Yeah. I just thought I heard you say that all went into the account. So when you were talking to Ricky, so well, I'm talking about two different things here. So I think I just okay, good confused, confused. you a little more. Sorry, yeah. I it's above, above my pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. That's I just want to say it's all good. <laughs> we're talking about criminal justice, then uh, maybe yeah. I can talk with you better. Yes, mm -hmm. I'm sure you. Maybe you also, I just went by and we take a look at the paper. I'm just curious. Yeah, you can That's come all. by any time. Sure. Thanks. So. Um, that's fiscal year 21, and um, I just have the new beginning of fiscal year 23 here. Um, let me see. All I can, uh, let me just make it really quick. Um, first of all, I want to uh, thank Christine Malabe, who's the, assist, the new assistant finance director. She's been here for one year. And if you would look and think at the first page, it says that we spent 11.4% versus 10.6 last year. That's because she has, within the first month, made all of these budgetary transfers. I mean, she's just really fast and did everything. So it looks like we spent more, but it's just because of her efficiency. And we um, made the transfers of the 735000 into all of the reserves. So now we have a very strong two point, um, not almost $3 million reserve uh, balance there. And we put the um, $25,000 already into the paving budget. So that was $450,000 um, budgeted. And then we added $25,000. So now Larry has on page three, $475,000 to spend. And then finally, we've made all of our contributions to the pension plan. And um, I do want to point out that our um, ADC was $789,000. The town put in the $664,000 that we budgeted. And the Board of Ed um, actually had 174,000 that they budgeted. So we've over uh, mm. um, contributed, which is wonderful. Uh, the nice. fire department also has over contributed. That AEC was 175 and we put in 180. So for the all said and done, uh, we're all set. And I'll stop there. Does anybody have any questions? If not, we will move on to the selection. Super brief. Um, the high school lights are being energized today. Um, we were, uh, Eversource has had to put in a transformer uh, for us to get uh, the lights working. And uh, they were uh, not sure they could deliver one because they're worried about hurricane season. And it's been you know, it's funny. Someone said hurricane season the other day. It's been so quiet, you know? Shh. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Don't say that. Yeah. Yeah. You just changed us. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, uh, remember you said that. Yeah. You do. Remember. It has been quiet. Thank you. Uh, um, they're not. Uh, I really think that he's jinxed it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. You obviously haven't been around when it's a full moon and think that the nuts come out then. We, so. uh, there is one just around the corner, <coughs> I think. We had it. Or no, we, we just, just had, had it. Just had it. Okay, anyway, then. so lights are yeah. going to be energized. Uh, it's probably two or three days of work. And then uh, on the other side, Sal, Majestic Electric, still has some work to do. What's really great about this is assuming they do get energized and the lights work, <laughs> they all work, they work. Cool. I believe, I believe the first game is a girls' field hockey game. Oh my god, that's great. And, and you is, know yeah. what's cool about that? They probably get no one at their games other than oh. a few parents. And they're gonna have a town full of people. And that's perfect. That's exactly the point of this is. No, not the point, but I, mean, I, I just think, I believe that's the case. And then you have soccer, girls soccer, boys football, and something like that, goes like that. Um, so we're hoping, and that's the week, that's like September 7th or 8th is the first game. 
uh, hopeful that that all happens, like uh, we're saying. Um, are you guys all aware on the river of the pump out boat? Mm -hmm. um, so free service for about seven towns. Uh, there are several boats that go around. If you put a white uh, flag on your boat, it means you'd like to be pumped out, which is your uh, little septic system on the boat. Um, basically, that has been grant supported for many years. Uh, Senator Needleman called the meeting today and said, that is not going to suffice it, uh, suffice for the budget for the next, probably for fiscal 24. So he is asking the six towns or seven towns, I forget how many, that uh, are part of that system to contribute probably like four to five grand uh, in next year's budget. So you may see that. I also may ask Harbor Management uh, to assume that expense. I think it's not illogical to do that. Um, and the garbage um, situation, uh, South Meadows Trash to Energy is closed. Um, the board, Mira Board of Directors, of course I sit on that, has discussed dissolving Mira um, and trying to offload the contract. So there's two transfer stations that still function, Essex and Torrington. Essex is quite functional. We still have about 11 towns, 11 or 12 towns that deliver to Essex. The Mirror Board of Directors talked about um, having those 11 or 12 towns become essentially their own waste authority. It's not that easy because now you're talking about con contract con contracts for those 11 or 12 towns to make sure there's a steady stream that would go to the transfer station that would then be taken to the Covanta plant. So um, it's easier said than done. Uh, in addition, on Thursday night at the Deep River Planning and Zoning Commission, um, there is a site in Deep River that is seeking to be permitted to take municipal solid waste. So if that happens, that could be a contender. Um, so we all agreed today that we would wait to see what happens. Who's doing that proposal? Uh, Dave, uh, not, I don't know if it's Dave, but Parati, his, his company. Okay. Switzer. Um, what's it? What's it? Switzer. Yeah, yeah. Switzer. So, um, so that's what's going on there. Uh, one, one question. Yeah. How can Mira dissolve itself if there's still a regulatory compliance over the Hartford Lane? If there were. They still have regulatory compliance and oversight of the Deep plant. would take that over. I mean, okay. so and and, and, and uh, keep you employed. Yeah. Mira, <laughs> Mira is going to have a huge, they've been wildly successful. They're dying gracefully. I think I said that at the board of selectmen meeting. Because energy prices have gone up so much, they have a ton of revenue right now. And because they closed the plant, uh, and because they downsized so much. Their costs have been down. So um, they estimate that if they were to fulfill their contracts through 2027, they would conclude Mira and Mira State as they are, they would conclude with probably about $28 million surplus that they would probably turn over to the state of Connecticut. Right now, they're up towards 40 million. Um, my I said this to Senator Needleman, for Selectman Needleman, probably talking, you know, he's talking in both roles today. My point is if the town of Old Saber, if, if Mira says we're going to dissolve, Essex Towns take the contract that we negotiated with CWPM carting out of Essex to the Covanta plant. We're going to offload that contract to you towns. I believe Mira should also give those towns part of that surplus. The Mira surplus is to be used for two things, offset tipping fees and to be equitably distributed amongst member towns. Two things. Any, if Mira were to dissolve, any assets of Mira would go to the state of Connecticut. But I believe that it, if the cost of garbage is going to continually rise, and um, right now it's rising and it's subsidized, 
we should certainly be entitled to some of the subsidy through the MIRA surplus. So that is still to be discussed. Um, there are some towards Hartford who would really like to see that site cleaned up um, and would like some of that $40 million to clean up the site, but that's not MIRA's obligation at all. Um, that site is cleaner now than it was when it was a coal plant before the trash to energy plant. And Mira's obligation is to simply turn over the site no worse than when they took it, and they will do that. So there How are they gonna pay for the closing plan then? They're, it's already budgeted. It's, it's in this year's budget for closure. Oh yeah. And that's not gonna come back on the number of towns. Nope, nope, not at all, no way. So a lot of issues, there's a lot going on. Uh, with, with garbage. I'll leave it at that. Okay. Any liaison reports? Any uh, comments from board members? Oh. Oh. I said we said it. Huh? Make a motion to adjourn. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Public comment in the audience. Public comment online. Does anybody have anything? There's a hand up. All right. Uh, what do we do with it? Hello? To adjourn. That's Brad. Is there somebody who wants to speak? Yeah, the house is on mute. There you go. Maybe they don't know Tony, are you uh, care to speak? You, you have to unmute. You have to unmute yourself. Isn't Tony uh, Brad? No, no, Brad's in the panels. Oh. Going on. If you'd like to speak, you need to unmute uh, whoever Tony is uh, that raised their hand. Go to more, Bruce. Go to more. Click on more. Okay. If, unless there's anything else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you, Brad. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.